Hello, welcome to Celebrating Intuitive Tarot for June 20th. So this is going out on the Monday. So first, thank you. I mean, like, thank you. The um, support, the love, the healing energy, the Reiki energy, all of it that came our way after um, <laughs> Vanessa's little medical episode last week. I cannot tell you how grateful um, we are. So this, and for those of you who may have missed sort of my little community blurb thing, uh, like the written message, this is what happened. On Monday, she had a complex migraine with auras. Um, and it was, it was, she has had migraines for like ever, forever. But this was not one that she even actually recognized sort of as a migraine. The pain was that intense and that severe. So we went to emergency. They diagnosed it as a complex migraine. Okay. Tuesday, she slept all day because they had given her, um, they're called uh, migraine cocktails to sort of, so she slept. Wednesday, she got up. And she had an errand to do. She came home and she walked in the house and she was like this and her lips were like this. It was not pretty. So another trip to the emergency ward. Um, but because of the symptoms, they really, really suspected that she had had a stroke. So then um, a neurologist was called at the Met Hospital that then necessitated a ambulance trip to a um, larger and, and better equipped teaching hospital. Um, that emergency room also suspected that she had a stroke. Ultimately, she was diagnosed with um, a complex migraine with an aura with a physical overlay. And from what I understand, it was the physical overlay, overlay that um, was causing sort of the stroke like symptoms. So that then necessitated three days in hospital. Um, she, you know, she continues to recover. She's having, I call them little episodes for lack of any better word for it. But literally once a day, around the same time every day, she, she, she suffers from sort of that same a paralyzation of usually it's her arm and her face it doesn't last long half an hour and that dissipates but we're still trying to get to the bottom of what's causing that and why it's happening literally a week later right that's where we are so thank you um it, it, we were just overwhelmed by the support and the private messages and the comments, the th all of it. Thank you so much. All right, let's move on. So, the January 6th committee is really doing a heck of a job, aren't they? I mean, they really are in a very sort of systematic and organized way, kind of laying out, um, and you know what, and it's not what all of us knew. That's the thing, right? There is so much more to the understory or the background story that truly none of us had an awareness of how corrupt and how deep and, and how organized the whole thing was. And so tomorrow morning, there's another hearing. Um, and I'm sure that that one is going to be just as riveting and insightful and informative as the others. So you've had, um, you know, kind of a series of, of kind of bad news stories, if you will, pertaining to the wannabe king and family. I mean, so he had um, his his cherished daughter. Um, Talk to the committee, your son-in-law. Um, recently, there has been 
you know, a court ruling that said not only does he, but um, Ivanka and Jr. have to give depositions, I believe it is, in the New York case. Um, there's this whole, whole um, interesting, insightful information about the $250 million for the Stop the Steal campaign, which never actually existed. And I understand that um, there are a few, a couple of states, New York, I believe for sure, who has kind of said, hmm, that's kind of interesting. We'll have to take a look at that, won't we now? Um, so it just keeps kind of getting more and more interesting and certainly more and more bad news for the family Trump. So I want to take a look and apparently he did a rally the other day and he was on and on and on and um, from what I understand he's appearing a little bit more and more um, detached from reality. I mean talk about Bill Barr's understatement of the year right he's just slightly detached from reality. But I want to take a look at him and I want to see how he's doing. He's yelling and screaming that he wants equal time. Well, geez, you have an entire media outlet. Why don't you take your time there? So this is going to be a little bit, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do sort of an overview because I, I have a couple questions here, right? And I'm, I'm going to try to roll them into kind of one overarching reading. I want to know how the, the Trump family is doing. I want to know the Justice of the Department, how they're doing. Of course, they have now asked the um, J6 committee to release the copies of the um, depositions or interviews. And I want to know how the American people are doing, um, particularly those, you know, and listen, this is the thing. The cult of Trump, it doesn't matter. They're going to believe what they're going to believe. The people I'm interested in are the people who are Republicans, independents, people who sort of, you know, weren't paying all that much attention, right? Um, who are now going, oh, oh my God, what is going on? Um, how, how did we miss this? How did we not know this? Um, those are the people that I'm interested in because those are the ones who are going to make, frankly, or break um, the upcoming, you know, election cycle, not only 2022, but 2024. Come on down. I have a question. Okay, so what we're going to look at is, ooh, that didn't shuffle. Let's try that one more time. All right, so um, Trump, Department of Justice, voters. Trump, Department of Justice, voters. Trump, Department of Justice, voters. Kind of get an overview, shall we? Okay, okay. So, it's, it, this is sort of almost exactly what I just said. The messages are getting through, okay? People who, you know, don't pay a lot of attention to politics, those messages are getting through in part because, frankly, it feels as if a lot of the um, networks, et cetera, are doing a very good job of covering it. There's recaps. If you have missed it during the day, you can catch all kinds of it at night, that kind of thing. And so word is getting through. The communications are getting through. Um, I think most especially maybe to people who um, weren't that interested, I guess. Those who want to hang on to the belief are going to hang on to it. And let's face it, they have a vested interest at this point. They have handed over their 10 and 20 and, you know, whatever dollar donations to this guy for months and months and years. They um, are so invested in believing this, the lie 
that for a lot of them, it's going to be very hard to figure out a way to sort of extract themselves from it and frankly, kind of, you know, save face. And it's so fascinating that it doesn't matter. I mean, you've got the Proud Boys saying, yeah, you know what? It was, it just wasn't what you thought it was. In fact, those Proud Boys, I mean, they were really out to just overthrow the whole government. But they're letting people know about how involved sort of the levers of government or the layers of government have been in this. It doesn't seem to matter who says it. If Trump doesn't confirm what they've said, what they've said is a lie. Just as simple as that. But as this continues to go forward, you really are going to see people really sort of... Um, processing the information and really looking at it um, you know, sort of almost like putting their own spin on it, right? People are going to start process. I don't mean their own spin as in an alternate reality. Um, I mean, but they're going to start putting together the pieces and really, you know, just sort of allowing themselves to really get a, a grip, if you will, on the reality of what went on um, between the 2020 election and, you know, when Joe Biden was um, sworn into office. And frankly, even, oops, even beyond that, this is going to continue to move forward. Okay, this is not going to be... Um, something that happened and then was sort of replaced by something else. Okay, there's going to continue to be more and more and more information that comes out. And I think I've said it before, you know, it's not only what's being released on television, but all the backup documents, et cetera, et cetera, are, have been or will be released. And so there's a whole lot more uh, information out there that is still sort of to be gathered and understood etc. So as far as sort of you know the former guy and the people around him there are very few now who are still really tight okay his his inner circle has really shrunk to just literally a few people because the others have figured out that they could really be in trouble, figured out that for their own reputations, whatever it is that they needed to talk to the January 6th committee, and they're pulling back and they're pulling back and they're pulling back. And so that's leaving him sort of more isolated and honestly surrounded by the crazy of the craziest, okay, or the craziest of the crazy, I guess is the way I want to say it. For him, it continues to be about money and power. He wants to run again in 2024 because that's the only way he figures he can get out of this legal mess. I don't see that happening because ultimately the idea, the understanding, the knowledge that that truly, truly was an attempted coup by a sitting president, that more than anything is going to kind of penetrate um, the consciousness on a broad, in a broad way of the American people. Yeah. The Department of Justice has a, you know, a heavy burden um, because it's not hearsay. It's not, well, I heard this or I, you know, whatever, you know, they require hard proof. And a lot of what, um, 
No, that's not accurate. Some of what we've heard in the hearings is, well, you know, I'm not exactly sure, but I heard this word or I was told, you know, the Department of Justice needs like concrete facts. But as they continue to partner with um, the Department of Justice, Oh, sorry, the Department of Justice and the January 6th Committee, as they continue to partner, and they will, as, um, it's listen, the January 6th Committee is going to hand this stuff over to the Department of Justice piecemeal, okay? They're not going to hand over stuff that they may still need to pursue their investigation, because their investigation, I really do believe, is going to go on beyond the close of hearings. They're not done, and they're not done by a long shot. But the Department of Justice is going to start getting information, depositions, interviews, that kind of thing, where the J6 committee has kind of said, okay, I think you know we're, we're done with this information, so we're going to hand it over to you. But it's not going to be given to them in a big clump. It's going to be given to them sort of bits and pieces at a time. That's not exactly how the Department of Justice wants to do this or wants to receive it. But I think by and large, that's how it's going to be. Now, the Department of Justice has a January 6th investigation department, unit, whatever they want to call it. That's been going on for a while. There's some information that the Department of Justice is going to now be able to access simply because they're the Department of Justice. They're not a, you know, House committee, right? Um, and they're going to continue to start pulling information in, understanding that they tend to work very quietly. And because of that, um, we don't kind of know what they have and what they don't have, but that's okay. We should just take comfort from the knowledge and the understanding that, in fact, sorry, I'm not sure what all that chatter is in the background. In any case, um, they're going to continue to gather their information and put that together, slowly, systematically, and diligently. There's going to come a time when more and more people, citizens of the United States, really are going to have to face some disappointing truths. And so they will. They're strong people. They're resilient people. But it's going to be hard for them to let go. <sighs> Energetically, you have to understand that what's going on is it's like a purging in some way. It is eliminating the energies that are not compatible with an age of Aquarius energy, that is not compatible with higher consciousness thinking, doing, being, <laughs> behavior, okay? And so there are going to remain those pockets of people who are incredibly defensive and do not want to see um, that which was kind of destroyed or dissipated. And they are going to continue to push to push back, okay? But energetically, again, it feels as if more and more the higher consciousness energies, the more enlightened energies, the desire to not have the kind of corruption that goes on in government agencies, um, the kind of sort of double dealing 
all of that is is you know really what people are looking at and saying this is no longer acceptable um in terms of how we want our government to run how we want it to look like and where we want to think and place our energies our money our values etc this is a process it's you know what do they say it's not a sprint it's a marathon that's what this is it is a process um and slowly but surely you know we're getting there but these these t things take time i mean i'm old enough to remember when seat belts weren't a thing i'm old enough to remember when you could smoke in the doctor's waiting room okay i could go on and on but we evolve and those who don't want to evolve kind of end up in their own world in their own reality but because of what's been going on more and more people are going to start seeing and recognizing the kind of corruption and trickery and deceit that has been going on and sure, there are states that are so red, they're never going to be anything other than red, or at least in the immediate foreseeable future. But you know what? Some of those red states are starting to look kind of purple, and one of these days they're going to look awful, awful blue. It's a process. Okay, you know, I don't know yet. I mean, I have always said that he is going to have, you know, the former guy. He's going to have a lot of trouble fi um, financially. He's going to have a lot of legal trouble. I'm not yet sure whether this is going to actually result in sort of, I think there could be indictments. I think he could even possibly be found guilty. I'm just not sure if he's going to get bounced into jail. But I have to say that it definitely looks like the tides are really turning against him. And again, this is being um, um, built up by people who were busy living their lives. And are now going, oh my God, those are going to be the people who are actually going to be super motivated to vote. Because let's face it, you all were already motivated to vote. Okay, so um, that's kind of where that's at, right? But it definitely looks as if there are going to be some form, I guess, of retribution in terms of the price he and those immediately around him are ultimately going to pay although i still maintain what's actually going to bring him down um I, listen there's a lot of things that are going to bring him down i think what's actually going to break him is going to be the business dealings oh wow look we've got him and him <laughs> side by side so you know ultimately the greedy king who's gone through his life behaving like a fool is going to discover that his unending quest for money and possessions and power and status is going to suffer a blow or two from the law he's not going to have options i mean i think that's the thing right he's just not going to have a lot of good options as he finds himself more and more left out in the cold and those few people who cling on to him are also going to be ostracized and pushed to the side 
because aside from a handful or two handfuls of people in the Republican Party, even they're done with him. It's starting to come together. You know, we've waited a long time. It feels like, well, years. In fact, it has been. But it's coming together because the information is coming out. Every day you turn around, there's new information, new insights, more stuff coming out. And it's going to bring it down. That which he tried to steal from the American people, which was their democracy. Ultimately, so much stronger than he is. So much stronger. Don't let the worry and stress get to you. You know, those negative emotions are never good. Let's stay positive. Let's stay hopeful. And let's stay vigilant. There you have it. Okay. There's where we're at today. Um, my reading schedule, I don't know what's going on this week. Honestly, I suspect um, I may put, I'm probably going to put a, a video, if not tomorrow, the next day, because I'm going to want to do a little bit of a recap of the hearings. But um, again, this is one of those times where I really encourage you to hit the bell beside the subscription um, button or the, the word subscribe um, so that you get notifications when I um, pop on. Again, thank you for everything and for all of it. Until next time, take care. Be well. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.